Hey, this is Pastor Tim. Thanks for joining me for this week's study guide, James chapter 5, verse 13 through 18. I don't know about you, but many times when I face struggles or trials, the first thing that I do is not what James is instructing in this passage. So without further ado, let's read the passage, and then I'm going to ask you a few questions. I encourage you to discuss these amongst yourself, maybe deal with them a little bit on your own. Uh, let, let James... And let what God's saying through James really change us today. So here we go, James chapter 5. I'm going to begin in verse 13. Read along with me. Is anyone among you in trouble? Let them pray. Is anyone happy? Let them sing songs of praise. Is anyone among you sick? Let them call the elders of the church to pray over them and anoint them with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer offered in faith will make the sick person well. The Lord will raise them up. If they have sinned, they will be forgiven. Therefore, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other, so that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. Elijah was a human being, even as we are. He prayed earnestly that it would not rain, and it did not rain on the land for three and a half years. Again he prayed, and the heavens gave rain, and the earth produced its crops. As I asked earlier, when trials come, there are certain ways that we can respond. So without further ado, let's get to the first question. In difficult times, what is your usual response to trouble? And how is this different than what James is instructing in this passage? Now, the second part of this is interesting because James goes from one swing of the pendulum to the other. If you're in trouble, pray. But if you're happy, if there's things going on that are good, what does he say? He says to sing. And so let's ask another question. Do you sing? And if you don't sing, why don't you? Is it okay not to sing praises to God? Can you think of other passages that encourage the Christian to sing? Pause the video and talk about this. So early in the passage, James talks about when you have times of trouble. Now he gets more specific. There is no trouble in our lives, maybe save the, 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 the illness of somebody else that we dearly love, than our own illness. And actually this passage deals with both, how we help others and how we help ourselves in times of illness. So, again, ask yourselves this question. What is your usual response to sickness, illness? And how is this different to what James is instructing? Now, to be honest, many of us will ask for prayer when we're sick. But James gives another ingredient in this passage that we don't typically talk about and most people don't think about. James talks about sin and how it affects our prayers, especially regarding prayers for healing. And so let's ask another question. Why do you suppose James instructs us to confess our sins to one another? Not just to God, but to one another. And could this lack of confession be the reason some people don't get healed? So again, James tells us to confess our sins to one another. There's, there's something maybe dynamic about confessing these. Maybe it encourage other people to acknowledge their own sin. One thing's for sure that too many times we just keep all this bottled up inside and say this is only between me and God. Most of the time our sins affect other people as well. And so it's not a bad thing to be able to confess these things. It's humbling and it allows us to be humbled before God as far, and as inside of other people. And so there is a humility in that confession of sin. There is something there that says we need God. Let me ask you one final question. Are you so right with God that your prayers are effective? What do you need to do today to fix this if your prayers are not effective, if you are not right with God? What do you need to do to fix it? I've been in the ministry now over 30 years. The number one prayer request is always about health. 
we tend to rush to the doctor. And by the way, this acknowledges that doctors are good. When James says be anointed with oil, that was medication. Most commentators agree. There certainly is a representation of the spirit in the anointing of oil, but that was also the medicine of the day. And in many parts of the world, that's still medicine. So he's not saying that doctors are bad, that hospitals are bad, and that medication's bad. But what he is saying is that we need to go to the great physician first. And so when we are sick, when we have trouble, we need to go to God, humble ourselves in prayer, ask other people to pray for us, and we certainly should be praying for others as well. And when we are right with God, our prayers avail much. And so shouldn't we go there first? Thanks for joining us today. God bless you. Hope you've had a good time studying the Word of God together.